pastor, Reverend Carl Perry, to the pastors of the North District of the Illinois Conference, to the lay, to the WMS, to the YPD, to everyone else. I greet you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. To God, be the Lord. Yes, Lord. God, we come to you this morning just saying thank you. Thank you for the ability to praise and to be able to say to God, be the Lord. Now, God, I got a special prayer. Yeah. I'm asking you to decrease the Alexis and increase you. Yes, Allow me to stand here at this point mm -hmm. that I haven't stood it. Bless the God. Go in, go in, go in, go in. Yeah, I'm going to relay. Yeah. Is he good? Breathe it through. Breathe it through. Breathe it through. Breathe it through. Yes. 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 Speak. Yes, 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 uh, have you not been pressing? Mm -hmm. Have you not pressed through your years before a COVID pandemic? Mm -hmm. Have you not pressed already through Zoom calls and trying to figure out how to manage and produce a service? Have you not already pressed praying for people and, and trying to worship and mimic what it has to look like for you? Have we not already pressed? Talk about these folks. 
Then it ends with another good old Christian quote to bless their hearts because Jesus has the power. And it caused me to pose the question this morning, do we have the same goal? Do we have the same goal? The scripture uh, in Philippians 3, I'm going to read 12 through 14, says not that I have already attained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to lay hold of what of that for which Christ has laid hold of me. Right. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have laid hold of it. Mm. But one thing I have laid uh, hold of is well. getting what lies behind uh, and straining forward to what lies ahead. Yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. Towards yeah. the goal, towards the prize of the heavenly call of God and right. Jesus Christ. Church, do we have the same goal? Hmm. Here, here we find ourselves with a writer known as Paul talking to the people in Philippi because there seems to be this division that I said earlier that some folks believe that their way of following Christ is, is right and, and while there are other folks that believe their way of living is right. Mm -hmm. So we find ourselves in this space of opposition between the two. This opposition sits in the reality of the people who built the church and the people were asking to attend. I missed that. You walked right past that. The opposition of the reality are the people who built the church and the people were asking to attend. So the people with, in which Philip, excuse me, the people in which Paul is writing to the church of Philippi are asking the people who live in the city of Philippi. Mm -hmm. If you're not familiar with Philippi, Philippi is a Roman city at this time, mm -hmm. and it was a trade city. So, yeah. so at this time, folks is coming in and out. Yeah. And we find that the church was planted by Paul, mm -hmm. who didn't even stick around long enough. It was built for the Gentiles, and then he had Lydia complete it. Yeah. What goal are we focusing on, Paul? Uh, this initial goal of the church plant was given by one person. Somebody knows that story. Then the church got built by a whole bunch of other folks. Right. And then we're asking for other folks to come into the church for a mixture of souls. Yep. Well, well, well. Do we all have the same goal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like many of us today, even myself, has walked into a church that was functioning in a vision, and then we came in with ourselves knowing that we can talk to the Lord so that we got our own vision to come into it. Now we're trying to figure out how to dismiss the last vision to walk into the next vision. The people are trying to figure out what they're supposed to do with it. We're going to call some other folks into the mix of the chaos. Do we have the same? Go. Well, this morning, y'all, I didn't come to tell you press. Mm -hmm. I figured you got pressed enough. Mm -hmm. I came this morning just to ask you, do we have the same goal? Mm -hmm. And because we already recognize, we don't. We don't mm -hmm. answer it for you. We don't have the same goals. But I recognize in the mix of this, there is something that is happening in this disconnect. And the problem is not that we don't have the same goals, because we technically are not supposed to have the same goals. The problem is, are we executing our goals? Uh, so, so, yes, you have press. So yes, you know how to pray. Yes, yes you know how to move. But do you know how to execute well, the goal? Uh, the first way to execute the goal is say you have to know who you are and who your church is. I have to teach appropriate relationships with clients. And the first thing we talk about is knowing what we like. So I go around the room and I ask the person, give me two things that you like. And some of you can say food, and some get some tangible items on my iPad. Uh, but there is someone who is listening to see what everyone else says just so they can give me that. And when I find that person, I, I realize I have to pull them aside and ask them by themselves, what do you like, mm -hmm. uh, what do you find yourself doing when you're bored? Mm -hmm. I begin to give them examples that I have seen them do and the way that I have seen them move. And then they begin to notice that the thing that they said they liked was really at the bottom of the list. Mm -hmm. Could it be that we have been cookie covering our way through ministry because we haven't sat and asked ourselves, who are we? Mm -hmm. who, who is your church? What neighborhood are you in? What, what is the church known for? Uh, what are you still known for today? Uh, what gifts do people have in your church? Church, church, church. 
question. How do we do an assessment on who we are and why we are where we are? The question is, who, who are we? It is required in order for us to move to the next level. This question, who are we, gives us direction on how to follow the goal. And I wonder if we are struggling because we are running to goals we were called to. God has called you to an appointed time, and God has called you to an appointed place, and God has called you to an appointed people. Right, right. And the question really is, are you doing the call? Yeah. All right. uh, if, if, uh, once you know, once you have sex with people, and you have talked and you realize who you are, who you are as a person, uh, what makes me tick, what, what triggers me so I don't go off on people, Elder, what, what has me smiling, what has me uh, uh, moving about the day, what motivates me when you realize what happens to you as a person, then you have the ability to call people in. But in order to do that, the second thing, once you know who you are, you must know who they are. Uh, anyone who has been in a relationship, you will realize that you have to learn a person's love language. Mm -hmm. And while well, y'all Terrence like to tell a story in which we first started dating Elder, right. he, he would buy me a whole lot of gifts, y'all. <laughs> yet, yet the problem was that he was confused, uh, uh, Mason, why every time he bought a gift, I still had an attitude. He, he didn't understand that, 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 that you learned as much as I appreciated the gifts that he would buy, I wanted experience. So y'all that brother's real smart. So he, he he realized real quick that in order for him to tame my attitude, I had to keep a smile on my face. He had to give me experiences. Uh -huh. But the catch is that it's just not about me. And many times we try to minister for just for us. So we want to make sure they know that us just right. We want to make sure they're doing us just right. So I realized that in a therapy, we find it ain't just about me. Right. And I see what I want to do in order for me to change his attitude. In order for me to keep a smile on his face, I have to buy some gifts. Right. Uh, could it be that God is telling us to let go of the old version of us in order to reach those around us? Uh -huh. But that in right. order to press to a goal, we have to know the folks who want to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That in order for us to know the folks who want, we're going to have to know what folks need. Yeah. That in order for us to Mm -hmm. 
uh, could it be that you thought you were called to help every person and every ministry and every event and every program and every community meeting and every y'all know where you go. Only to find yourself left busted, disgusted, tired, and exhausted. Could it be that we have been serving in areas with people we have not been called to? I, I came to release you in this moment to say you ain't got to do it all. There's 1,200 million churches out here. If you can just stick to your target audience, when, when is the last time you sat with God to know what you are supposed to be doing right now? When is the last time you had a conversation that said I knew a vision when you first got there, but what's your vision for this year? When is the last time that you recognize that you have a purpose and that purpose is not the purpose you had 10 years ago? When is the last time you had a conversation with God people to say now we are called to something new that, that everybody figured out in COVID that your call may not have been streaming. Maybe figured out in COVID that your call might not have actually been preaching in that moment. Maybe your call was pastor not in the pool, people in the street. Maybe you have to recognize the switch that has occurred. That has occurred. I just came here this morning well. before I hit my feet just to release you. I'm here to release you to live in your call. Yeah. Uh, to live in the call that helps you to focus and serve the capacity in which God ordained you to. Yeah. I am releasing you. I am yeah. releasing you to feel like you got to be everybody and everyone. Right. I am releasing you. Uh -huh. I am releasing you to free yourself to uh -huh. do exactly what God calls you to do. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Or, or maybe you, you've been coming to these meetings, you, you could keep doing and being obedient, as Paul said, but you are still, still awake. There, there's still some kind of disconnect that has occurred. If that's you, come to the altar. God is calling. And then maybe you need prayer. And because in the midst of the release, there's still fear. In the midst of still not doing what they want us to do, we still find ourselves holding back. So maybe you just need prayer to stand and who God ordained you to be. Because it's not going to be easy. Right. But if you can just stand and who God called you to be, well, and maybe you can just have us come. We have a lot of people who will pray with you. Yeah. So if there's anyone right now who just needs prayer, to say, I'm ready to move and who God called me to be. Not who the elder called me to be, not, not who the bishop called me to be, not even who my membership has called me to be. I'm ready to stand in who I am called to be. And those uh, who have to go, let them go, because others will go. If anyone needs to pray right here, please come to the altar. Then let us pray together. God, we thank you. We thank you for the joy of letting us of letting us pray. We thank you that we made it to this far. Now, God, we're asking for direction. So direct us, Lord. Direct us to be exactly who you called us to be. Let us not waver away from who you have ordained us. Holy Spirit, enter into our minds. Enter into our bodies. Enter into our churches. Enter into our communities right now and direct the people who we are ordained to to come directly to us. God, let us be open. Let us be open to be able to talk to people. Let us check who we are. So that we can have the ability to stand in front of people to tell them how we can help them. And then at the end of the day, let us say glory. Glory, glory to God. Because we know God, it will be you. So God, we thank you. We thank you for the journey thus far. We thank you for what you are going to do. And we are expecting you to do something great. So God, show up. Show up in our homes. Show up in our homes. Show up in our churches. Show up in our communities. Show up in our cars. Now show up so that when we hear from you, we will listen. And for that, God, we say thank you. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.